Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Social Studies. Um, this one, we are going to be filling in some notes. I'm going to try, I think I'm going to not give you questions for this one, because there's a little bit more writing, a little bit. We're going to try to fill in an entire note sheet, if I can do this in time. Let me check my time right now. Okay, I'm going to try not to spend too much time. Okay, so this is notes on the Constitutional Convention. The Constitutional Convention is a big thing this week for us. Um, it's going to be a big meeting in Philadelphia to revise the Articles of Confederation. Just a little bit of background for you. If you remember, after we declared independence on July 4th, 1776, we had a period of time until... 1789, basically 1788-89, where we had a different government than what we have today. We had a different constitution than we, we have today. We had an article, a constitution called the Articles of Confederation, which provided for a different type of national government. It was a very weak national government, as you will recall. And then after Shays' Rebellion, here in 1787, that convinced people that this government was too weak. We needed to fix the Articles of Confederation. So they have a big meeting in Philadelphia to revise the Articles of Confederation. And instead, they're going to decide to write a new constitution. So this is the note sheet that you need. This is note sheet number two. Now you have to fill this out as we go along. That's how you're going to get credit for it, is by showing me the filled-in note sheet. Okay, you got to fill this out, and you're going to have to bring it. Now, what about all you people who love to say, oh, I did it, but I left it on my desk. I left it at my dad's house. I left it um, in the dog house. I left it, I don't know where else you might leave it. Wherever you leave it, don't leave it. If you want to get credit, you have to show it to me. Now, if you've already left it somewhere, you can do it on Cami, but once again, you're going to have to show it to me to get credit. Okay, so the Constitutional Convention, it is this note sheet right here. Pause, get that note sheet out, go sharpen your pencil or pen. I'm good with pen, I don't care, that's fine. Okay, you ready to go? Good. Okay, so what was it? It was a meeting of representatives or delegates from 12 of the 13 states. Hint, hint, hint here. The underlined words will help you. The purpose of this was to revise, and revise means fix, to revise or fix the Articles of Confederation. Why would they want to do that? Because the national government set up by this was too weak. The national government was too weak. The national government was too weak. Remember that. Okay. Instead, however... The delegates soon decided to write a whole new constitution. That should be underlined, but it's not, so I'm underlining it for you. Okay, so right now we have just filled in the first little section of the notes here, this what part. Now we're on to when. When was it? Well, it was during the summer of 1787. Those are the exact dates. Do you need to know that? No. Should you remember 1787? Yes. That's a good date for you to remember. It helps like put a little stake in the ground for us to remember where we're at, what's going on here. We know 1776. We know this. Actually, we know 1492. We know 1607. We know 1776. And now 1787. Good dates to know. I'm not going to ask you what the exact dates were. It took place during the summer. That's good information to know. You can write summer of 1787 and you're good. Where was this, you say? Well, here is where it was. This, what is that? I mean, that building looks familiar. Have I been there before? Actually, I have. Have you been there before? Maybe not. But watching John Adams, you've seen this building. This is what is now known as Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Liberty Bell used to be located up in this bell tower. However, it was removed and it is now located across the street in a little park, Liberty Park. Um, so where... Independence Hall, Philadelphia, PA. That is in Pennsylvania, in case you did not know that. Should you know that Philadelphia is in Pennsylvania? Yes, you're in seventh grade. You should know that. Okay. All right. Um, who was there? That's where we're at in the notes now. There's a little section that says, who was there? Wait, I'm going too fast. Guess what? You have a pause button. You can pause this video at any time. Okay. 
Sorry, I don't mean to be sarcastic. All right. Um, who was there? The Now, this is going to take a little bit of explaining, but the people who are there were nicknamed the framers. We'll talk about this more in school, but the framers, because framers are people who like build the framework of a house or a building. You have the foundation people build the foundation. Then the framers come up and put in the skeleton like of the building. These people are because they built the framework for our country, they're kind of nicknamed the framers. Who are the framers? So I would put in your notes, framers, in quotes, and then 55 delegates, those are representatives, delegates, delegates from 12 of the 13 states. There was a state not there, that was Rhode Island. If you, All right, this is just, you don't need to, this is just to help you understand. So we have this big group of people called the Founding Fathers. These are not all of the Founding Fathers. You could, you could include almost anyone who contributed to the building of our country and the revolution as a Founding Father. Some of them were people in the military, like Henry Knox, for example. He would be considered a Founding Father. Um, so there's all of these people are founding fathers, everyone in this group, and lots more. I just didn't have room or time to write everyone. But then within this group of founding fathers, you have a smaller subgroup of the framers. There were 55 of them. I only put the famous ones here. But those were the people who wrote the Constitution. So they're a subgroup. They, these people are both framers and founding fathers. That's just to help you understand. So we're in the part of the notes that says, after you wrote who was there, you wrote the framers. Now, these are some famous delegates, some famous delegates who were there. George Washington was there. He was nicknamed the president of the convention. Let me just see what the notes look like there because I think I changed it from the ones I printed. Oh, yes, George Washington, president of the convention. There you go. Um, James Madison, nicknamed Father of the Constitution, because he's the one who really helped organize this convention. He was there every day taking notes. He copied down everything that everyone said the whole time. He came up with a plan, a rough draft called the Virginia Plan that sort of set the tone, and that's what they worked from. So James Madison, Father of the Constitution. Ben Franklin was another person there. He was in his 80s at this point, but he was from Philadelphia. He was kind of the host. Alexander Hamilton. We'll be talking a lot about Alexander Hamilton. He, Whenever you think of him, think he wants a strong federal government. Alexander Hamilton, strong federal government man. So he is obviously in favor of this constitution because it's a stronger national government. Um, he was there. And finally, Roger Sherman. I know what you're thinking, but we don't judge people on their appearance. No comment on his parents, okay? Roger Sherman proposed the Great Compromise, which you'll find out about in a minute if you don't already know. Okay, who was not there? So we filled in the famous delegates there. Who was not there? These are some general categories of people. First, we're not there, and then we're going to list a few famous founding fathers who are not there. Okay, who was not there? Well, there were no women there. It was all men, all white men, all white men who owned property all wealthy white men who owned property and were highly educated. Kind of an elite group compared to like the whole population. So women were not there. There were no African Americans, no Native Americans, no enslaved people, no children, no poor people, and nobody from Rhode Island. Do you have to write all of those down? Not necessarily, but you got to get the general gist of it, that this was not necessarily an all-inclusive representative group of people who was there. Um, some famous founding fathers who were not there, who you might think were there. Thomas Jefferson was not there because he was over in France at the time. He was being the ambassador to France with King Louis. John Adams, not there. He was over in England as our first ever ambassador to England after declaring independence, or Britain works. Patrick Henry, someone who we always almost kind of sort of talk about but never really you don't really need to know him, but he was there um, in Prince, not there because on principle he was boycotting because he was afraid it was going to create a too strong of national government. He wanted no part of that. So like Rhode Island, he stayed home. Okay. And the last thing down at the bottom, oh, these are some scenes from the convention, George Washington there leading the convention. This is inside of Independence Hall. 
it looks a lot like on John Adams. This is what it would look like if you visited Independence Hall maybe like 10-ish years ago when you still had a flip phone and the light wasn't very good and you took a picture and it was kind of blurry. This is what it would look like. Um, this is the seat, the actual seat that George Washington sat in. And this is the actual um, quill pen, well, the inkwell, it's called. There's a famous story about Ben Franklin said that he sat and watched the George Washington sitting in this chair and wondered if this was a rising sun or a setting sun, meaning was a, was the sun rising under the United States or setting on the United States. Okay, there's another better picture. City Tavern is a street. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. We don't need to know that. National Constitution Center. If you're ever in Philadelphia, this is just down the street. They have life-size statues of all of the framers. You can go and mix and mingle with them, except for COVID. Um, the preamble, that's the part on the bottom. This is the introduction to the Constitution, the preamble. It's the introduction. It's the part right up here at the top that says why they're writing it. It says, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common fence, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish the United States of America. Uh, we will um, go over this again later. I'm not going to worry about that. Just write down in the notes the preamble is what that is called. All right, now on to the back. I know this is going to be a little long, but remember, I'm not going to put questions. I'm just going to have you fill this in. So this is on the back of that sheet. The compromises. There are many, many, many compromises made during this convention. There's three big ones that you need to know about. First of all, what is a compromise? I've heard that word before, but I don't know what it is. Well, a compromise right here in yellow is an agreement in which both sides give up something in order to reach the agreement an agreement where both sides give up something. There are three major compromises you need to know. And on this note sheet, there's one for each box. So you can go ahead and fill in. This one is the great compromise. The next box is the three fifths or three fifths, either way it could be written compromise. And the last box is the slave trade compromise. Okay, now once you have filled in those titles, we'll go back in and up and fill them in. So the for the first one, the Great Compromise, the question or issue is how many representatives or votes, in other words, how much power should each state have in Congress? And note, Congress is the national legislature, which is the group that makes laws. Okay. And that goes in oh, this box right here. Small states and large population states disagreed. The small population states wanted, the underlined part, equal representation, sorry, equal representation or votes or power in Congress for each state. They wanted all states to have one vote or all states to have two votes, whatever. They wanted them all to have the same number of votes, whereas the large population st states said, no, 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 that's not fair. Why should, let me put it in today's terms. California has a population of about 40 million people, whereas Wyoming has a population of about a half a million people. So California is approximately 80 times larger than Wyoming in terms of population. Is it fair that they both get one vote in Congress or two votes in Congress? The people of California would say, no way, San Jose. Get it? San Jose, California. A little joke there. Okay, large population states wanted representation or power or votes in Congress to be based on population. So the more people you have, the more power you have in Congress. The solution, Roger Sherman came up with this great compromise, it's called. The solution is to split Congress into two parts or two houses. In one house, the Senate, all states are equal. There are two senators per state, regardless of population. Don't forget you have a pause button, pause and write, pause and write. And the next, the House of Representatives, where power is based on population. The more people you have, the more representatives you get in the House. Note, a little note on the very bottom of that box, a census, that is when the population is counted every 10 years. 2020 was a census year. All right, the next compromise is the three-fifths compromise. Don't forget that pause button if you need it. 
The question or issue was, when counting states' populations, should enslaved people be counted? About 18% of the population was enslaved. They had no rights. They could not vote. They had no freedoms. But should they be counted? Hmm. This was, it might be a little backwards from what you might expect, but the southern states where they have a lot of slaves, they want to count the slaves. They want to encounter the enslaved people because they had many. So this would give them a larger, pay, a larger population and thus more power in the house. I hate when I make a mistake that I didn't close the parentheses. It's an open, open parentheses and never closed it. Sorry. You can do that in your notes and make them even better than mine. Okay, the northern states, by this time, a lot of northern states, well, some of the northern states at least had outlawed slavery. They had zero enslaved people. So they did not want to count the enslaved people because they had few. So that's going to, in proportion to the southern states, I'm sorry, compared to the southern states, they're going to lose power because they don't have as many. Huh, how can they resolve this? Hmm. The solution was the three-fifths compromise they count three out of every five enslaved people, or they count three-fifths of the enslaved people, or 60% of the enslaved people, all mathematically the same. That's the solution. So it helps bump the population up some for enslaved people, but not as much as if they had the hallway. Okay, then finally, the last box at the bottom, the slave trade compromise. We're not writing out the issue or question or solution. Basically, we're just giving you the answer here. Congress was not even allowed to discuss ending slavery or the slave trade for 20 years. People were worried, specifically North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, were very worried that if this new federal government with the new Constitution, which was going to be more powerful, what if they used that power to end slavery or to outlaw the slave trade. Note, slave trade meant importing kidnapped people from Africa to be sold as slaves. So basically, in order to not leave the convention and go home, they reached a compromise that Congress, with all the powers that Congress is going to have in this new government, they're not going to be allowed to even discuss ending slavery or the slave trade for 20 years. Okay. That should do it. You should have, so remember, this pink sheet, front and back, you're going to have filled in when you return to school, and you're going to have it with you, and you're going to show it to me in order to get credit. No excuses, right? All right, thank you very much, and have a pleasant today.